Okay, the first thing we want to do is show the sketch, which we can do from the little fly out that appears when we select the sketch in the feature tree. The next thing I want to do is right click and grab hold of the contour select tool here and that allows me to pick different segments of this sketch so that I can use instant 3D to actually pull it out to create an extrusion. If I press M or hold down M it will give me a mid plane extrusion and I'm going to set that to 50 millimeters. With the contour select tool still selected I'm actually going to pick this region now and again I can pull that out there. If you hold down Alt and hover over a face it will snap to an up to surface end condition or alternatively we're going to use the M key again and we're going to just drop that onto 40mm this time. So we'll drop that down like so and then all you need to do is right click and say end select contours and then that will close that tool down. The next thing I want to do is start a sketch on this face, which I can do from the flyout, so just pick the sketch icon. I'm going to grab that line there, click my S key, and use Convert Entities to convert it into the active sketch. And then if I double click to exit the sketch and select Extruded Cut, I can pick that single line, and this, this uh, single line I can use to actually cut off the end of that item, so I don't need to... Uh, I don't actually need to fully close that sketch at all, which is quite nice. Now the next thing we want to look at is uh, is a tool that's quite underused if you do in general sort of geometry, but is available from Direct Editing Toolbar. It's something called Delete Face. So if we select Delete Face here, I can actually delete that face, and if we set the option to Delete and Patch, you'll see it will reinstate the geometry that was there before the cut extrude that we created so SOLIDWORKS remembers the regions that were there before and allows us to reinstate those. If we just step back there and we'll use delete face again uh, again we can select the face here but I just want to use the delete option because what that will allow us to do is completely uh, sort of turn this into a surface body you'll see here that we can see inside that so the next stage to this is to show you something else uh, and this is quite good when you are working with imported geometry here I can select an edge and click delete and it will give me the option to delete the hole or the feature so for example if this were a hole uh, I could just say OK and again it reinstates the geometry that was there before which is really nice so if we just go back with our control Z tool there we're going to look at some other bits and pieces now uh, the first of those is to just have a look at the back end of this component and look at the difference that a fit spline makes to uh, this back face. You'll see it's one continuous surface. It's really useful if you want to map labels across multiple surfaces or sketch text or something like that. So uh, it can be quite a nice thing to do. The next thing I want to do is I actually want to insert a part into a part. So from the insert menu you can select part and I've got a component here called indent that I want to use to cut a section out of this uh, this arm that I'm creating. Now with the insert part command there's a number of things you can do listed on the left hand side here. If you click the green tick it will insert it at the origin so the two origins will be paired up very much like when you make something in an assembly. So I'm going to insert that in there and then I'm going to use a feature called indent so available from here you can uh, obviously put that onto your S key if you need it all the time and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the indent tool to actually make a cut using my inserted part so here toggle on cut and then it's going to remove that you can build offsets in here as well uh, we actually want a zero offset so we can add that in click the green tick we're going to hide the body from the graphics area as well so you can use the fly out here no problem at all the next stage here is I actually want to insert a, another sketch from another part onto this face so using control tab I can switch between documents and if you do have another sketch in another part all you need to do is make sure you're not in that sketch hold down control and press C and then if we switch back to the open part I can hold down control and press V and just paste it into position if we edit this sketch now we can uh, we can add in some dimensions to that so firstly I want to add a dimension between here and here and uh, this is a good use for the right click to actually lock the focus of the dimension when you're quite tight in. Uh, I'm going to place that down and that wants to be 50 millimeters. Now that's actually gone the wrong way so what we need to do 
is double click on that and we can actually use this arrow button here to flip the sensor the dimension so allowing us to enter negative values so we'll add that in and the next thing we want to do is just add a couple more positioning dimensions so we want a 13 there and a 13 there like so and now what we're going to do is we're going to use that uh, that sketch to create a cut so if I just exit that what I want to do is I want to use a tool on the surfacing toolbar so if you haven't got any of these toolbars on all you need to do is right click and turn those on uh, and I'm going to create an extruded surface using that you pick you can actually say I want to go up to surface right click select other and pick the face through the geometry so that will allow me to create that and a right click here will say OK so I've now got that surface body so the next thing I want to do is insert a feature called cut with surface so I'm going to use that just up here and all I need to do is pick the surface and make sure the direction that it's cutting is correct so we can select the arrow from the graphics area and right click and say OK and that creates a cut with the surface I've just created now what we really want to do is uh, is sort of hide that that surface so we can grab it from the graphics area like so and click hide and that goes away no problem at all now uh, a nice thing that we can also do in SolidWorks is control select faces here and it will give us a normal distance so here you can see that's 50 millimeters but we can also use a tool called uh, called mid surface so if we go insert face or surface sorry mid surface we can actually get it to populate the boxes automatically because we've pre-selected if we right click here it's going to add a surface directly in the middle for us now sometimes these can be quite tricky to select uh, surfaces things like that so if you click F5 you can get access to this filter toolbar and I can hear I can say that I want to only filter surface bodies and it will allow me to select that I can then right click and say isolate and I've now got that surface body just on the screen for me there I'm going to use another tool now but first I'm going to turn off the filter toolbar uh, or the selection sorry and then press F5 and that will take the filter toolbar away we use untrim surface here and select the surface and you'll see it will actually untrim all those operations that had been performed on uh, on solid geometry before so quite a nice way of getting you back to just a plain surface so here we're going to add that and then we're going to exit the isolate command and now what we're going to do is we're going to write well we're going to start a sketch first on this surface here so again if you just select the surface click the sketch tool I then want to right click on this face and say select tangency and then I'm going to use my S key to select something called an intersection curve so this can be quite a useful command if you do want to get the intersection of an, intersections of anything that cross uh, the sketch plane so here I'm just going to select that uh, and then I'm going to double click to exit my sketch and then I'm going to use trim surface here so the sketch is pre-selected and the trim surface will allow me to select items that I want to keep so here I'm just going to select the middle bit right click to say OK and I get left with that surface in the middle there the next stage to this is to thicken that so again up on the toolbar here we can choose thicken select it we want that to be five millimeters equidistance we select the middle option and here we can add that no problem at all the next stage to this is to chamfer some faces so we can actually just select the edge we want to uh, chamfer and select the chamfer tool directly from there if we type in three millimeters and click enter now it will uh, default to adding that dimension for us and we can just pick uh, through geometry to grab those edges and you can see that that will uh, chamfer that no problem at all so the next thing uh, we want to do is look at some of the tools that we have on the evaluate toolbar here uh, and some nice ones to sort of uh, help us with analysis are something called symmetry check first and foremost so we can use symmetry check uh, and basically select a plane to analyze for any symmetry in our design so we'll just run that tool now so this is really good if you want to limit the overhead that simulation is going to give us because we can analyze half a part so it tells me the part is symmetrical about the front plane so in theory we could cut that uh, if we needed to there is an automatic symmetry split option within there as well uh, and then run the simulation on half the component 
The next thing I want to do is look at Design for Manufacturer Express very briefly. So this is another Express tool that comes free in all versions of SolidWorks. So here we can choose some settings and this will help analyse whether the component is valid for manufacture or not based on rules that you give it. So here you can see the manufacturing process. So there are different options depending on what you're doing. So if we leave it on mill drill only, we can specify certain rules. So you can see those there and then if we click run, what the software will do is generate a report for us to tell us how many rules are passed. So we can see 7 out of 10 uh, and how many have failed. So if we look here it will show us certain instances uh, of features that couldn't be machined or maybe sharp corners here. So that sharp corner on the inside would be quite difficult. So once we've sort of validated that process we'll just close that tool down now and we'll take a look at that area in particular so you can see that we've got quite a sharp intrusion there uh, and this is another good tip for if you're using inserted parts here we can actually right click on this component and say list external references and you'll see here that I'm using a configuration called without fillets if I drop that down I can specify a different configuration to use and say OK and you'll see that the cut feature that we used uh, there, the indent, is actually updated all nice and logically there, which is great. Uh, finally, to this component, just before we move on to the next thing, I just want to add a, a sort of one mil fillet around that edge and that edge there. So we'll just add those on.